Hey, I'm Alex Rackley from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Obsession, a game designed and published by Dan Halligan and Kayenta Games. This is a game of pride, intrigue, and prejudice in Victorian England, often described as Downton Abbey in a box. This game delivers on that premise. This game is mostly going to be a combination of worker placement and hand management, but it's done in a very different way than the typical worker placement you might expect. You see, there is no competitive worker placement in this game. Rather, you have your workers, your, your various servants, your, your women's maids, or I don't remember all the various terms, your butlers. It's been a while since I watched Downton Abbey, so forgive my lack of knowing all the correct terms. Your footmen, your... Other names for various people who are in the house. Downton Abbey was a great TV show, by the way. You should watch that. It'll really get you in the mood for this game. But all that aside, so those are your workers in this game. You're managing your staff, as it were, and your staff will go in and out of rotation as they take certain actions. So you'll utilize your staff, and then they'll go back into your ex uh, your expected service area, where they will wait and take a turn off as they rest prep, train, whatever it is you want to thematically assume they are doing. From there, they'll move back to your servants' quarters and then back to the round. So they effectively have an off turn every single round. That is the worker aspect to this game. But where are you placing your workers in Obsession? What is it that they are well, working on. And to that end, you're primarily going to be doing events. You're going to be hosting events in this game. You will have, for example, over here, this card over here is an event in your private study. So you'll put down your worker in your activity over here, you'll assign the relevant staff to that, and you'll choose certain cards representing both your family, your actual family in the game, as well as various guests that you will slowly but surely add to the, the people you know. This is a game, this is a world in which you want to be well-connected, because well-connected people will give you different benefits, things your family members can't do, more prestige, more money, more everything in this game. And of course, like in any Victorian England, knowing people means you will also get to know more people, so it is an ever-chaining effect. So you'll assign the guests, this one requires two family members, so I will take two family members, I will put them down over here, and then from there I will assign people to the actual cards themselves, as well as the event. Basically, as you can imagine, if you are hosting an event, you're going riding, let's say, the various guests will need their own women servant and men servant or whatnot to actually handle them, as well as the event itself will also need various people to run the event. You need people serving the food, you need people managing the horses, whatever it is. Because that is effectively the theme, the driving force of Obsession. It is all about being a family in Victorian England and then slowly but surely working your way up that food chain, working your way up by hosting events, running activities, having people join, making more friends, making more connections, getting more money, getting more reputation, all these things will combine into, well, hopefully having the most ideal score. And so that hand management aspect of the game, like I said, is going the worker placement we covered already. The hand management is going to come from your initial hand. You'll slowly but surely be adding guests to your hand. And as you play guests to events, they will go out until eventually you take a passing turn where you draw back absolutely everything into your hand, similar to Concordia, similar to Century Golem Edition or any of game, any of those games in those genres. And that effectively is the core mechanism of obsession. There are a few other things to be aware of. There is this aspect of reputation that will slowly but surely going around as you raise your reputation from one all the way up to potentially nine, depending on whether you're playing the short or the long game. And reputation is going to be impactful for two reasons. First of all, it's going to affect your score at the end of this game. And then secondly, both various locations and activities on the board that you can earn and eventually do, as well as many of the guests you will unlock, Many of them have a barrier to entry requiring a certain degree of reputation because you might be friends with Lord so-and-so, but friends is one thing. Actually showing up to your dinner party, well, that requires a whole different level of being the right kind of folk, as it were. And so managing your reputation is one of many currencies you have to manage in your game. The other currency you're going to manage is actual coins, because coins are going to be mainly impactful for buying more of these various locations over here, various different things you can do, the estate, the, the sporting events, the monuments that will give you reputation every single round. All of those will require, basically, money to add to your, to your estate so that you can do more things throughout the course of the game. So managing your money is important. Managing your reputation is important. From there, there are going to be a few other scoring mechanisms in terms of, for instance, instance, you are going to be courting the young lady and lord of the land, the most impactful house as it were, which means every single round we're going to draw a particular card that tells you you're going to want to have the most estate cards this round, because if you do, if you have the most estate cards compared to every other player, you will be currently 
courting the young lady or lord, which will give you both a powerful card as well as endgame will give you endgame points that, well, they will add up. They will help in this game. Managing all these things throughout the course of Obsession is the game. The theme shines through to this game to no end. This is very much Downton Abbey the board game. If you would have told me, hey, Alex, you're going to be playing a game in which you are trying to win the hand of the young lady of the land. Well, I mean, I probably would have believed you. I'm down for playing most games. But nonetheless, Obsession manages to do this well. There are so many things that I like about Obsession. There are so many things that are a reason to add this game to your collection. To begin with, the art style of the game is very much matches the theme of the game. From the black and white photos on these cards, which normally I, I don't like black and white photos at all, but everything in this game matches the genre it's trying to be. This is very much Victorian England. This is very much has that slightly draw yet slightly thematic. I mean, similar to the way Downton Abbey is a show that I never had any interest in until enough people said, Alex, you have to watch that show. It is great. And then I did and I love it. Similarly, Obsession is a game that I had no interest in. But the 8.2 rating on Board Game Geek cannot be ignored. The various people in my life who have enjoyed this game cannot be ignored. And so, and so similarly, Obsession is a game which the art style turned me off until I got involved at which point it matched. That art style really genuinely matched. The implementation of the theme is so key in this game. The implementation of the theme really comes through. The idea that you're hosting events is so... It works. It really does. And then you, every time you host an event, you're going to flip the tile to its other side and return it back to your estate, representing the idea that events once hosted are worth more points, but then they tend to lose their impact on that second run because... Taking your guests riding is excellent, but if you're frequently taking your guests riding, where is your creativity? Where is your imagination? Why are you not hosting a variety of different types of parties, dinner parties, uh, riding activities, who knows what? And so this game specifically in the construction of the game incentivizes you to use activities once or twice, and that's basically it. You are not meant to be repeating the same thing again and again. You can, but it will not reward you with as many points and will not reward you with as powerful or as beneficial actions as the first original event did. Because, like I said, going riding twice is no one's particular cup of tea. And that theme is going to come through from the rotation of your servants to the the, 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 the reputation you have on the board to the fact that some of these guests will, will do things like stealing other people's staff, which is just rude when you think about it. There are a lot of different things in this game that really drive home that Victorian theme. And which levers you press in this game matters a lot. Whether you're going to go for money, for prestige, for guests, for reputation, knowing where and when to push, all of these things will work together in unison. In unison. In unison. In unison, that's the word. All these things will work together in unison in the sense that having a ton of guests can be incredibly helpful, but if you don't focus on your reputation, you won't be able to play half those guests. Having guests and reputation is helpful, but if you don't have money, you won't be able to actually have new events. You'll have a handful of guests that you can't properly make the most use of. Uh, knowing where and when to manage all these different levers of the game, when to push on this one so that it accelerates that one and slowly but surely rise in unison. You see, that's that word again. That really works in this game. So there is a strategic push in this game. Additionally, and I guess finally, this game does come with a long and short mode of play. There's both a 16 round game and a 20 round game, allowing you to choose the current game time or play implementation that you want to have. And so far, we've only been playing the short round. We have like multiple games under our belt so far, but we haven't actually felt the need to give the long game a shot. The short game has been so enjoyable. And it's the kind of thing that I've been pulling it out consistently with my wife to just play at the end of a long day. We've played it once three player, but most of my games have been at that two player count. As far as things I don't like about Obsession, to begin with, I will say the art. And I know I included that in the things I liked, but it's true. The art style doesn't pull me in. It happens to kind of pull me in once I am in this world. Once I am here, I feel it matches. But, but I mean, it's, it's still kind of drab. It fits. It fits. I don't know what to tell you. It does fit. But it's not the same level of, of art style. This is not a game. Obsession is not a game that I will ever look at and say, you know what a game my collection is that has great art that you should totally get? Obsession. Obsession is that game. I will not say it. I like it. I think it fits. But it's not a game in which the art drives home. It's not a game that I am getting because of the art. It's a game that I got pulled into a certain degree despite the art. I also don't like the fact that you're being driven specifically to these courting goals. This idea over here that you have this estate that's going to tell you they have this car that will vary round by round telling you which goals you want to get, which buildings you want to get in order to successfully court the young lady and lord of the land. The problem with that is I find it pushes me in a direction that I don't necessarily want to build out my, my engine. And the problem is 
even though it's only a handful of points you will get throughout the game by actually achieving these goals, they can add up. At the end of the game, those eight points or whatever it is can actually matter significantly. The ability of getting the noble along the way and being able to utilize it throughout the course of the game, those things can matter. And so the game kind of drives you in a direction that is is being decided by the game, which I I don't like that as much in general. I'm not a huge fan of of goals in games that force you in a certain direction. Slightly guide you, sure. Slightly adjust the way you're going to do things, certainly. Slightly adjust the the various pressure points on which decisions you have to make, sure. But in Obsession, I found consistently that if you totally ignore these goals, you are going to unfortunately lose. And so I don't I don't love that. It's not the worst, but it's certainly something I don't love. And for me, the thing I don't like of Obsession the most, the thing that drives me, I guess, the furthest away from it is going to be powers and abilities. And usually, usually powers and abilities is something that goes into my like section. And specifically, it's in my didn't like section because I find the lack of powers and abilities slightly slightly frustrating an obsession and that's because throughout this entire deck of cards throughout all these hordes full of guests that you have potentially access to they they tend to really just have mostly slight variations in the denominations they provide this one provides 300 money and then two guests this one provides a level two guest and you get to draw two and pick one from a level one guest this one provides a boost of two reputation along with a level two guest they generally and mostly have the same consistent things going on, just changing up the variation of how powerful they are, when they can be used based on rep which reputation level, which deck they are in. They don't often feel that unique. There's a handful that do. There's a handful that actually have an ability that actually feels like, ooh, now I can do this and this and this, and that's pretty cool. But for the most part, this entire deck of cards is mostly going to be iterations and variations on the primary currencies of the game. Obsession, for all that it does well, for all that it makes accessible, and for as much fun as that developing engine is, it doesn't have powers and abilities, and that that makes me make sad? I want to say sad. It makes me sad. And to, from there, we're going to go into what I can see others not liking, and that's going to be primarily two things. These are both things that I can see as reasonable complaints, but didn't particularly bother me. And the first is going to be the luck spread in goals. You see, you have these objectives over here that you're going to get, and you can iterate through them. You'll start with five goals. They're all going to have different kinds of things, getting different buildings, getting different staff, doing different things, getting a certain level of reputation. And then throughout the course of the game, you can slowly discard them to ev eventually end up with three or four goals, depending on the game length, that will be your final goals for the game. And the... That works to a degree. The problem is some of the ones that give you the most points, some of the ones that will give you 15 victory points in a single goal compared to this one, which has six victory points. I mean, the sixth one is easy to achieve. That 15 one isn't. The problem is sometimes the 15 one is because very often these objectives are going to be dependent on the buildings that actually show up. And so you, uh, there are various ways you can make more buildings enter this queue and ensure that more buildings are likely to be seen, but you might have to pay for those. Versus someone else might get a starting goal and then very quickly and easily and luckily just get all of those buildings that they need to get an extra 16 points, which can be a huge swing. And I can see that being irritating for others and it didn't really bother me at all. I don't, I don't have an easy answer why. It is certainly something that I see as a valid complaint. It's just not something that particularly bothered me. And then second thing in terms of others not liking is going to be that this game can be AP prone, especially I want to say at two players. Once you hit that three player count, it was better in terms of our two player versus three player games. The three player was better in the sense that you had a little more time to think through which combination of guests you were going to combine with which activity that round and how you're going to manage your servants. But in a two player game, there were frequently times when we didn't have enough time to fully prep that combination because there's a lot going on in those decisions. There's a lot going on of saying, well, this one, this card over here is obviously going to be the right guess that I go with that pairing. But if I end up doing this, then I'm going to have to do that one next, which is going to require these three. So that won't work because I don't have enough left. So let me try to rethink that turn again. Because of the fact that you're often thinking two or three turns in advance, trying to come up with the perfect combination of things can lend itself to AP prone turns. It does lend itself to strategy and decisions which I like, but it also lends itself to AP prone turns, which can be a problem for others. For me, it was not so impactful that I'm going to include it in my not likes, but certainly something to be mindful of. As far as my final thoughts on Obsession, I really enjoy this game. I do. It isn't the 8.2 for me that it is on Board Game Geek. This game is a solid game, 100%. I am happy to own this game and own this game I, I do. This game is staying in my collection, hopefully for the foreseeable future. We'll see how long it lasts, but I'll talk about longevity in a minute. But it's certainly not the 8.2 it is for for others, at least not for me. Uh, that's again, it's just my own opinion of where it lands. I enjoy it. I find it 
more fun than I think I should. I don't really know how to describe that. The worker placement in this game isn't competitive, so it barely really feels like worker placement. This game is primarily just managing your various resources from your staff to your locations to your hands of cards, and there's something elegant and fun and accessible about it. Honestly, similarly to the way that I couldn't really tell you why I find Downton Abbey so enjoyable as a TV show, and it's just a bunch of people with infighting and issues, really, at the end of the day. I don't know why I enjoy it so much. Similarly, I couldn't tell you exactly why I enjoy Obsession, but I do enjoy it. It is accessible, it is easy to teach, it is easy to play. We've been consistently getting in our two-player games of this in the shorter version, getting them in at 45 to 60 minutes, which is a nice playtime. And it is fun to ramp up those events. You start off with events where you have two guests and then great, and by the end of the game, you're having a giant event with six different guests and getting a ton of stuff that you're pulling in in order to cycle through your next turn. That long game I actually haven't played yet, I imagine is going to be so much more impactful. Those extra four turns, once you have your end engine up and running, I imagine, would lend itself to a lot of different, well, more things you can do. So yes, so Obsession is staying in my collection. The longevity, I believe it's going to be staying for a while. My wife recently just put this game in her top, I believe it's in her top 10 games of all time. That That's definitely going to add to the longevity. Uh, for me, Obsession is a solid game that I do recommend you check out. Not as good as the 8.2 it is on Board Game Geek, but one that I anticipate being here for quite some time. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.